understands the benefits of staying active, but isn't necessarily into the idea of the fast-paced Zumba or aerobics, or interested in spending hours walking on a treadmill or sitting on a stationary bike. The I Can Do program will teach you how to use the walking cane as a tool for exercise and self-defense. The program will also introduce you to new ways of dealing with limiting thoughts, thus helping you to stay motivated to continue working out, which will enable you to maintain a great quality of life. While the I Can Do TV show is a great start, it isn't a replacement for quality instruction from a certified instructor. Now, let's get started. I want to quickly cover with you what we're going to do with the cane at points when we're not using the cane for exercises. And you would also use this at times with you're in the store, even around the home, when you need both hands for doing something, but you want to keep your cane close to you. Your first choice is hooking your cane in your pocket or hooking it in your waistband or your belt. And the reason for this is because if something does happen and someone starts coming for you, you can grab for the cane immediately and be ready to deal with them. But at the same time, when you need your hands free, they're free. It's, think of it as the old West style kind of quick draw of the pistol. It's the quick draw for your cane. Today, Bob and I have a special guest with us, Colleen, who will be helping us to demonstrate some of the activities throughout this episode. So let's get ready and let's start working out. Now we're going to be warming up the wrists. So we're going to hook our cane into our belt, and we're going to do the yoga prayer stretch. So you're going to bring your hands together as if you're doing a prayer, and you're going to bring it down. Okay, raise the elbows as your hands come down, but make sure to not bring your shoulders up. Because what happens is a lot of times people will bring their shoulders up to their ear while they're trying to do this stretch, because they think that the two are connected. They're not. So if you find your shoulders are up, just take a big deep breath in, and on the exhale, just relax the shoulders. All right. So now from here, we're going to take our hands and we're going to rotate them down into the reverse yoga prayer stretch. Okay. And in this case, you're going to be raising the hands up, whereas before you were bringing them down. And we're still going to focus on keeping the shoulders relaxed with a big deep breath in, keeping the focus on the wrists and the wrists only. Now remember, at home, we don't want to over push. Only take it to the point where you feel resistance. Not the painful resistance, just the, the body telling you this is the stop point. Okay? You're going to incrementally, over time, work past this point. But if you try and push too hard, like what we were taught in high school when we were told to stretch deeper and so on, we run the risk of injury. And when it comes to connective tissue, the ligaments, the tendons, especially in the wrists, we don't want to risk them. All right? So now we're going to gently release by allowing the hands to drop, separate the prayer, shake out the hands, and we're done. Now we're going to warm up our wrists. We're going to grab the cane in a mid-shaft grip, and we're going to do the single hand cane rotation. So we're going to start out if you watch Bob here, where it's just palm up, palm down, up, down. Do not push past that at this point. You've got to give the muscles, you've got to give the ligaments and the tendons 
the time to kind of get warmed up. So look at it as doing about 10, and then move your hand back to the elbow, where you start to allow yourself to go deeper. Now, at home, you may not be able to see this, but what's happening is Bob is allowing these three fingers to relax on the cane as he's doing the rotation. So he's still warming up the ligaments, but he's not over-rotating them. And he's helping to practice his ring that we've mentioned in past episodes. This ring is important because it's what you use to control your cane when you have to use your cane for self-defense. And now Bob's going to change hands, and he's going to do 10 with palm up, palm down, and then he's going to go back behind the elbow, and then eventually to the shoulder. Now, when working with your cane, you always want to make sure to warm the wrists up. That's why in every episode, we always have a stretch to warm the wrists up, to get it going, before we go into doing any of the techniques. All right? So at home, do this as well. Now, in time, you're going to find that this also is usable in other ways, and we'll cover that in other episodes. And then when Bob is done, he's going to shake it out. And, okay. He's up to nine. He's up to ten. And now he's going to shake it out. We're going to now warm up our spine with the twist. We're going to get our core going. So we're going to bring the cane up. We're going to have our feet about shoulders width apart. And we're going to start to turn. All right. Turning back and forth. Now, we do this, uh, this twist in every single episode because it's very important. It warms up your entire core in one nice shot. Now, I do want to point out again that when we're doing the twist, we want the heel to rotate, to come up off the ground as we twist because that allows us to follow through and protect the spine. We want to keep it protected. The idea is to not Cork the spine to twist it in any way. You're going to find that over time you're going to aggravate your back. You're going to cause yourself to have back issues if you do this exercise repetitively, but keep your heels planted. Okay? Now we can do it a little faster to really get the blood going, to really get the circulation going. Okay? And as we do this, try and practice letting your arms relax. So it's the momentum of the hips turning that allow the arms to move. It feels like your arms are being pulled. All right? Breathe nice and slow as you do this. And then go ahead and you stop. Shake it out. It's now time to stretch out our legs. So in this episode, we're going to do the straddle stretch. All right? So what's going to happen is we're going to basically bring our feet apart. And I'm going to move back so that Colleen can bring her feet apart. You're going to use your cane for support. All right? So you are going to lean forward and put weight on your cane as you allow your legs to move out. Now, you don't have to go super far. You just go as far as you can where you feel a stretch, though still feel like you're balanced and maintain control. Now, I'm going to come up, and what's going to happen is Colleen's going to breathe nice and relaxed breaths. On all the exhales, what's going to happen is she's going to allow her legs to relax a little more. Sometimes they'll move out and your stretch will deepen. Other times, it'll stay there, right where it's at, and that's fine. Now from here, what she's going to do is she's going to tense all the muscles in her legs. She's going to tighten them up, okay, and she's going to hold that for about, say, a, a 10 count. And then she's going to release them and allow her legs to relax. Okay? And you notice how all of a sudden her feet started moving. And now she's going to tense them again, hold it for a good you know, 10 seconds or so, and then relax one more time. And you notice how all of a sudden she just got deeper. To come up, what she's going to do is she's going to kind of heel toe the feet in while pushing up with her arms on the cane. And then she's going to shake it out. All right. 
Today's balance exercise is going to be the front kick, side kick combination. So what's going to happen is I'm going to move out so that Bob can put his cane down to balance, and then he's going to practice doing the front kick and side kick without putting his foot down. So what's happening is his supporting leg is getting the balancing workout while the kicking leg is getting a hip flexor stretch, or, or sorry, strengthening, a glute strengthening, right? And he's practicing his kicks and kick combinations. All right. Now, tactically, why would I martial arts train this? If you have a guy in front of you and a guy to the side of you, you're able to start to deal with them. All right. You can also use this to front kick a person and then turn and side kick their knee real fast as well. All right. These are reasons why you might use this combination for a martial arts purpose. For our purpose, we use it to work and practice our balance. Now, as you can see, Bob here is being an overachiever and doing the other side. At home, if you want to do that, you can. However, because we do have a time limit, I'm going to have to cut Bob off. But you can pause the show and continue practicing as long as you like. As long as you balance both sides. We're going to focus now on blocks, some of the empty hand techniques. So go ahead and put your cane aside or hook it into your pocket. For the sake of space and so forth, we put ours to the side. Now we're going to work on the overhead block, empty hand, but we're going to work on alternating. Before we worked on doing it individually and with a punch, but now we're going to do both arms continuously. Okay, and we're going to demonstrate. So Bob's going to go and block, and then he's immediately going to go into the next block. Okay. You want to make sure to breathe while you're doing this. If you hold your breath while blocking, well, it's pretty much as good as getting hit because you're eventually going to run out of gas and pass out anyways. All right, so now, hold for a second, bring it back up. You want to have it so that the forearm is what's on the outside. You want to have it so that it's about a fist's distance from your head, so you have some shock absorption, all right, but, you also want to have it so that it's high enough that the opponent's not going to crash through and just bonk you onto the top of the head. All right. Now this is a great punch to stop a, a Chuck Liddell style strike from over the top, which people are doing now, or even a hook, okay? Because then their elbow ends up hitting, or your elbow ends up hitting their bicep. All right, so now go ahead and shake it out. We're going to take a different approach to teaching this block. Normally, I make sure that all of, some of the correction takes that I'm going to do and so forth are done before the filming starts. But this time, because this is a block that a lot of people find unnatural and don't understand, I'm actually going to work with Bob real time, essentially, on, on, on film. All right. So this isn't going to be as raw and or as, as polished seeming, hopefully we seem polished, uh, as uh, normal. This is going to be sort of real raw footage. I'm going to have Bob face me. We're going to do the inside, the inner forearm block. And so what's happening is you're blocking with this part of the arm. So you're coming up, boom, and stopping. You see this in, in different styles. Taekwondo has it, Wing Chun has it. A number of different styles have this kind of a block. It's a very effective block. You're doing a radar style action, sort of a, a, a a semicircle um, with this action. Okay, the idea is if someone's punching center line, you come up, you do that, and knock them out, but knock the block out. You want your arm at about a 45 degree angle. Okay, this is the strongest angle for all blocks. Okay, this 45 degree angle. So boom. Okay. Now he's going to have this hand up and ready. Okay. He's going to come and he's going to block. Now, the habit a lot of people have is to over rotate. The problem is, this actually leaves these bones exposed. They're not in their strong alignment. This way gives them a strong alignment, and this way, because they're padded with the muscle of the forearm. So, you want to come this way. The thing is, is the mistake that a lot of people make is they come and they just do it all arm. But if you watch Wayne Chun, 
All right. What they do is they turn, the arm really naturally only comes here, but then they turn the shoulders just a little bit. And so your arm stays within its natural scope. So when you practice this, practice this one in front of a mirror. Go to your mirror and practice to make sure that you're, boom, you're turning. Boom. Okay? That you're not just staying static like this, but you actually rotate the shoulders. It's not a huge over-rotation. It's just going from being square on to being 45 degrees off. Because then, I'm taking my opponent, I'm taking their block, and taking their energy out. All right? Now, it takes time to get to become natural. And you may still find that you go here, and that's when you watch in the mirror to make sure that it's this part. All right? So practice this one at home in front of the mirror. This is a very powerful block and can set you up for some great follow-ups. In the martial arts world, they oftentimes will teach you how to get out of a, a double-handed choke or a lapel grab. And, and there's a good reason, because it actually really does happen uh, at times. So we're going to go through and we're going to teach you some techniques today that will address how to get out of that and, and use your cane uh, as part of the tools to get out. So Bob is going to grab her in a double choke. Now what's going to happen is we are going soft because we don't want to hurt our training partners. But I want to point out that she's about to hit him in the leg and if she were doing it at speed to save her life she would at the very least pulverize the thigh muscle itself. She's going to hurt him. So his attention, once she hits, is now diverted. He's no longer thinking about his hand, he's thinking about the pain in his leg. From here, she's going to bring her hand up in between and grab his wrist, a solid grip on his wrist. She's going to start to turn her shoulders as she uses her elbow to trap his, freeing her neck. Both hands are coming off her neck between the turn and her elbow. She is free at this point to do a follow-up technique, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Please don't. Okay. You can use your imagination on what the follow-up technique would be. So, from there, once again, he grabs her, she hits his thigh, grabs his wrist, turns, and now I want to stop for a second, and I want you to see how she has him crossed up. She has him crossed up. His hands are trapped. He's not going to get out away in time to stop her from any follow-up technique she chooses to do. But we are not going to show that technique. Now the second technique that we're going to go over concerning getting away from a double choke or a lapel grab, it's, it starts the same. So he's going to grab her. She's going to hit him in the leg. All right. Now this is really important because again, it's a distraction. The pain is going to get his hands from thinking about here. So I don't care if your opponent, your bad guy, can bench press 500 pounds. When he's thinking about his messed up leg, his hands are totally out of his, his thoughts. So now she's going to reach up and over, and this time, not underneath, but over. She's going to grab, and then she's going to start to turn her shoulders as she pulls the hand off of him. Now, we're going to change angles. So now you can see, she's pulling the hand away from her. His hands are crossed up, they're trapped. And then she's going to bring her cane down on his arm. Okay? She's going to pulverize the muscle, potentially break bone. But more likely than not, because you have a small distance, you're not going to get full force. You're going to pulverize the muscle. So once again, so she hits the leg, grabs the wrist, turns the shoulders, crosses him up and pulverizes the muscle in the arm. That will keep her bad guy from even really considering doing anything else. He's got a messed up leg and a messed up arm now. That's a great way to stay safe. Now to practice what this would look like without a partner, so Colleen's going to hit the leg. The first time she's going to practice coming up and over, grab the wrist, turn the shoulders and pull with the hand, and then come down, boom. Okay. She's going to go ahead and hit the leg, swing as if she's hitting the leg. Then she's going to come over and grab, pull, turn the shoulders, and then down onto his arm. All right? So once again, he grabs her, he hits the leg, she grabs his wrist, pulls, comes over, and pulverizes the arm. Practice this at home, get comfortable with it, memorize the sequence. Even the other one where you come up from underneath and you're turning the other way. 
Practice them at home so they become instinctive. We really enjoy bringing these shows to you. And we'd really love to hear from you to find out your thoughts about the show. Find out what we can do better and, and what parts you like. Because right now we are sort of doing it within a vacuum. Uh, we don't know if you're really enjoying you know, the interchange between uh, the cast or if you'd prefer to go back to just me. So if you could send us an email, um, and the email will be on the bottom of the screen, or like us on Facebook um, and message us, you know, however you want to communicate with us, um, we'd love to hear from you and, and let us know what we can do to make the show better. Today's episode, we're going to focus on gratitude again. But see, this time we're going to use gratitude in a way that's going to help us out of negative situations. What we're going to do is think of a negative situation that you would like resolved. All right. We're going to take a moment and we're going to list out 10 things from that negative situation, that negative issue. 10 things to actually be grateful for regarding that situation. And then, after you've listed out these 10 things, say out loud to yourself, or you can say it quietly in your head, thank you, thank you, thank you for the successful resolution of this issue. And for the rest of today, spend the entire day without saying a single negative thing. Don't say anything bad about anything. And if you find yourself going down that path and starting to say something negative, well, then what you can do is use your lifeline, as it were, and say thank you to, you. Thank you to yourself for the successful resolution of this negative issue. Thank you for the lessons I have learned from this negative issue. Now, in today's exercises, you may have found negative thoughts coming up, negative feelings about the exercises, about the difficulty of some of the stuff that we are having you do. We're moving the program forward, making it a little more challenging for you viewers who have been watching it for a while. And you may find you know, some negative things to want to say about it. And that's, that's fine, that's great. But then ask yourself, are there some things I can be thankful for in this? You know, if we're having you do something complicated like the front kick, side kick, or any of the other exercises we've had you done throughout the entire episodes, all the episodes that we've ever aired, how are they now compared to how were they? How would they have been in the past in doing them now? So take a moment and say thank you to yourself for continuing on and taking those negative thoughts and setting them aside to continue your training and continue moving forward and really gaining control over the quality of your life. Thank you for watching our show. Like us on Facebook. I can do! Facebook or Bob gets it.